Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinrin Yoku bringing you a La Soufrie Volcano Special Edition. Saturday, April 10th, around 9 p.m. Mountain Time, 2021. You're looking at the latest GO satellite, and you can see La Soufrie, La Soufri, pumping out massive amounts of ash after its fourth eruption in two days and still puffing and passing. As it turns tonight there, one, two more puffs. But this main plume that we're looking at here, I want you to take a look at it, the size of this. It comes here and down here. This is from a massive new eruption happening just hours ago to 40,000 feet, the largest in a series of four eruptions in two days. Now, according to the mainstream, ash-covered streets in St. Vincent, as it braces for more volcanic eruptions, and according to many, they could be experiencing larger eruptions. And how telling is this? The first two were under 30,000 feet, around 25 and 20,000. The third eruption, which I reported on over at Magnetic Reversal News earlier today, hours after it happened to 35,000. And now this late evening explosion to 40,000 feet, definitely stratospheric input here, as we can tell from the Himawari. I'm sorry, the ghost satellite. And just a massive amount of ejecta. And that's all traveling towards Africa, apparently. As we speak. But before it gets there, it has to hit Barbados, which is really in the crosshairs of this uh, volcano. And Barbados is having, having some exceptionally poor weather. Visibility. And I think it's raining stones there unfortunately. Now let's get to the latest uh, eruption here. Explosive activity continues. The Volcanic Ash Advisory Center warned that a volcanic ash plume rose to 40,000 feet, 12,200 meters, flight level 400, and is moving 35 knots in the east direction. Obviously, aviation color code should be red. I don't see it on here. I'm looking at it. I know how to read these charts. And this is coming after two eruptions, three eruptions at this scale. So what we have is an ongoing eruption, the 2021 eruptive phase of St. Vincent, which is uh, matching historical documentation. And we're going to get to that at the end of the podcast tonight. So stay tuned. Now, this is St. Vincent and the Grenadines down here. And you can clearly see off the north portion of that island is where La Soufrie is, and where it has been quite active in the last 48 hours, hours of powers. St. Vincent braces for more explosions, and they could be strong. It's an incredible scene in the Caribbean where experts warn a volcano on St. Vincent could keep erupting for weeks. A plume of ash rose 50,000 feet high after the volcano rumbled a second time on Friday. Tens of thousands were evacuated with more than one third of the island restricted. Nearby nations have temporarily opened their borders to the evacuees. The volcano last erupted in 1979. Some incredible. Yeah, in 1979, what erupted right after that? Mount St. Helens? We'll get to that. And we'll show you some footage of some of the eruptive activity. Absolutely spectacular. Look at it pushing up through the atmosphere there. Absolutely amazing. We even have some footage of some plasma discharge coming from the ionization. And the plasma footage is actually from tonight's eruption, which makes it even more fantastical. So let's just blow this up for you for all its glory. So we can watch that up, up, and away. And this is the second out of four eruptions that we're looking at currently. And we're going to be looking at this, the third eruption, the one that happened earlier today, pushing up into the stratosphere. Um, the way you can tell is that secondary plume that gets pushed up above some impenetrable layer there that's sitting right on top of the first plume. There's a big plume and then a second one that pushes up right there. So we do have some stratospheric injection coming from this, and let's take a look at this video. <laughs> <laughs> what did it go to commercial? Oh my goodness. 
We don't have a lot of bandwidth here on satellite, and I apologize, so that's clearly what's going on. Let's take a look at some of this footage next to a house. This is pretty spectacular. Um, and, and if you could just watch as the, the wind like blows up and over this home as it's erupting. This is a, obviously time lapse. But how terrifying would it be to actually be living here? I mean, I would definitely be trying to get away from this place. But some people don't have the luxury, clearly. And there is some other really good footage coming up in just a second, so let's wait for it. Absolutely amazing what we're witnessing on the planet. Now, we've seen eruptions of this size in the last several years, but the fact that this volcano continues to puff, 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 and puff is something that we really haven't seen, something this intense and ongoing. Following the Iceland eruption, we now have explosive, silicious uh, volcanic activity ticking up. And this last time that it's erupted uh, explosively like this was just a few months before St. Helens went off, Mount St. Helens. So we're keeping a close eye on the Cascades. And it would be my guess that Mount Baker or Mount Rainier would be going off before St. Helens, but anything's possible. And again, we're looking here at the GOES satellite of the third eruption. And here are pictures of the fourth eruption tonight. And clearly there's not a lot of good uh, imagery of the fourth eruption. It was in the dark. Uh, but we can see the plume clearly going up miles and miles. And they're claiming 40,000 feet with lightning. Excellent footage that we're getting out uh, for, because of social media. Now, let's just break down Sofri St. Vincent for you. And here we are at uh, the data set from the Smithsonian. Thank you, Smithsonian, of the eruptive history of that volcano. And as I pointed out uh, in an earlier podcast when these eruptions began, that this volcano has erupted at VEI 3 or 4 during every grand minima back to the Maunder. So we have the Maunder minimum VEI-3, we have a Dalton minimum VEI-4, followed by a VEI-1 shortly after that, and it could be a period of eruption there, and another VEI-4 happening during the centennial minimum, and then a VEI-3-4 happening now, following the VEI-3 right before the St. Helens eruption, one year before. St. Helens is May of 80, this is April of 79. So that's what's going on at Soufre. Let's see what they have as the latest reports. I'm sure it's not updated. No, and it's not at all. <laughs> and that's just what we have to deal with in science. It's very hard to pull this information out of the ether. Now, if we're looking at Volcanic Explosive Index or the v Volcanic Explosive Index, the VEI, uh, you can see here that St. Helens is listed at 0.25 cubic kilometers, and I've seen 0.3 for that. Rainier is at 0.3. Aya Fiocal at 0.3 back in the 2010 eruption. This is the 250 BC eruption of Rainier. And there could be a 2022 eruption coming soon. St. Helens VEI-4, they're calling it VEI-4 and VEI-4. And these were very high VEI-4s. So here's Mount St. Helens, approximately a cubic kilometer shot into the air. And that's right at the VEI-4-5 cusp. And a lot of people um, say that that... Mount St. Helens is the entry level into VEI-5, and that's what we would say would be the minimum, VEI-5. So I think what we're seeing happening now is VEI-4, and if it continues to erupt, it could extend up into the VEI-5 range. Now, some of the stats coming from St. Helens, we'll go over with you qu quickly here. On May 18th, the second earthquake of magnitude 5.1 triggered a massive collapse of the north face of Mount St. Helens the largest known debris avalanche in recorded history. The magma in St. Helens burst forth into a large-scale pyroclastic flow that flattened vegetation and buildings over 230 square miles. 
More than 1.5 million metric tons of sulfur dioxide were released into the atmosphere. On the VEI index, the eruption was rated 5 and categorized as Plinian. If you want to know what that is, click on the link when you get here. The collapse of the northern flank of St. Helens mixed with ice and snow and water to create lahars, which are volcanic mud flows. The lahars flowed many miles down the Tool and Cowlitz rivers, destroying bridges and lumber camps. A total of almost 4 million cubic yards of material was transported 17 miles south to the Columbia River by the mud flows. For more than nine hours, a vigorous plume of ash erupted, eventually reaching 12 to 16 miles above sea level. And what we're seeing happening now is something slightly sh less than this. The plume moved eastward at an average speed of 60 miles per hour. So what we're seeing is eruptions to maybe 6 to 10 miles up, as opposed to 12 to 16. And now we have four continuous eruptions. So this is, putting, this is just at the VEI 3-4 cusp, in my opinion. Um, right in this region, 0.1 cubic kilometers of material, and it is growing. So... It depends on what happens moving forward. So just to recap, La Soufre in the St. Vincent, fourth eruption in 48 hours. This one to 40,000 feet, the largest eruption happening in the evening and sparking off some volcanic lightning, which is pretty spectacular. Wait for it, there it is. And luckily, people are being evacuated from the island. And here we can see that activity from the GOES satellite. Hope you got something out of the video. This is an ongoing eruption. Could last, as you, you heard the reporter report, for, for weeks, potentially, eruptions of this size. Now, if we're taking it categorically, we've seen four eruptions in a row in two days. The first two... I had an inkling were precursors to bigger events, and they were. So two eruptions, 20, 25,000 feet, followed by a 30,000-foot blaster today, followed by a 40,000 blaster tonight. What will happen in the morning? We're going to be covering it for your glory. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance in the grand solar minimum, in the magnetic reversal. We're all experiencing and living it together as we report on it. Thanks to our one-time donors, our Patreons, everyone that reached out to happybirdseed.com yesterday. Thank you. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people and click on one of the other boxes to gain more knowledge. Be safe. We love you. And that's a boom, literally. To la souffre. And things to come.